all too often we somehow think if we change one thing it will produce a polar opposite so for example if you look into prioritizing taking care of yourself just a little better you know basic things like eating more healthy somehow in your mind you come up with this picture of you becoming that person who only selfishly serves up broccoli bread and tofu steaks to your carnivorous family and they will hate you for it. Hi there lovelies, I'm Rhonda Crimes. I'm a life and leadership coach supporting everyday people just like you to reflect and rework your everyday stories so you can step into the everyday leadership of your families and communities and create compelling, meaningful and fruitful lives every day. Today let's talk about if I change too much, will I still fit in? This is possibly the biggest fear of a people pleasing good girl. It is driven by an underlying fear of being unwanted and unworthy of being loved unless they are being and doing everything the people around them want or ask. Hell, even if they don't ask, my people pleasers will be anticipating and watching for every opportunity to be the most helpful in their quest to feel loved and fit in. It definitely poses an interesting paradox though. If you find yourself unhappy, unfulfilled, dissatisfied, overwhelmed and being at the effect of everyone and everything in your life, yet you're concerned that if you make changes to yourself, you will upset the apple cart of those people those events, those circumstances, the very people and, and situations that are, quite frankly, contributing to your current experience. Hmm. What I have personally experienced and noticed in my clients is that actually when they begin to get curious with what is important to them, when they explore the stories they've been told or are continuing to tell themselves, when they dig deeper into their own thoughts, hearts and intuition, they gain access to a power of themselves that in fact enables them to help support and take care of the very same people and things <laughs> with renewed energy. All too often, we somehow think if we change one thing, it will produce a polar opposite. So, for example, if you look into prioritizing taking care of yourself just a little better, you know, basic things like eating more healthy, somehow in your mind, you come up with this picture of you becoming that person who only selfishly serves up broccoli bread and tofu steaks to your carnivorous family and they will hate you for it. If perhaps you decide getting more sleep would be good, a good thing for you, suddenly the story you are telling yourself is that your partner will resent you for leaving them alone every night. Hello, fact check lovely. They are actually already expecting you to comply to what they want, regardless of how it makes you feel. If you've ever let them know how you feel, but that is a topic for another day. I believe what needs to be made very clear is that when we recognize certain aspects of our lives are not going the way we'd like, we can make changes to ourselves. Our responses, our actions, our beliefs, our physiology, our emotions or our thoughts. All of this can be done without expecting 
anyone else to do anything differently. When we become sure of our own thoughts, beliefs and bodies, we reach a new level of understanding of who we are and what we are worth. We are then actually more equipped to realize we don't need to fit in to belong and be loved. Brené Brown says, fitting in is about assessing a situation and becoming who you need to be to be accepted. Belonging, on the other hand, doesn't require us to change who we are. It requires us to be who we are. When you become clear on who you are, it is easier to fully accept and love yourself being that way, not the replica that someone tells you you should be. And the people that you have also determined are the most important for you will embrace you. Now, yes, it does take courage to love and accept yourself, especially in a culture that is constantly reinforcing that you put yourself at the end of the line. We live in a culture that was born out of a patriarchy. Oh that has been allowed to leverage its power with domination and dominion, keeping women small and quiet, keeping them in their place. Power driven by the individualistic pursuit of one, not the collaboration of many. That is why I do the work I do, to support women to reach the point where they can tap into their own inner personal power that fuels their own courage to take the steps they need to live the life they do want to live. Not the life they've been told to expect and put up with. So getting back to the original question, if I change too much, will I still fit in? I have to say, Maybe you will and maybe you won't. For me, a more important second question is, will you still want to? If the people around you are so fragile and fearful that they would want to hold you back, keep you small and compliant, is that truly love and belonging? Or is it just another tentacle of patriarchal oppression and servitude keeping you in your place? I know I've spent the better part of at least 25 years making changes of and for myself. And yes, there have been moments when it got uncomfortable in some of my relationships and circumstances. But I know the ones that matter are even stronger for the challenges and the growing pains. I know I belong with these people. I don't need to try and fit in. This is also my wish for you. At the time of recording, I'm about to be presenting three free online training masterclasses called Endorse, how to become more emboldened to live life your way, even when you don't think you should. I'd love you to join me head over to rondacrimes.simplero.com forward slash endorse and save your spot on one of these workshop trainings. I am really confident you won't regret it. Now, I hope this chat has been useful and if through this message, you see that your now is not the picture that you painted for yourself or something completely different that you intuitively know or feel isn't letting your true colors shine through, please get in touch with me you can do it really easily by leaving a comment, sending me a private message, or popping over to my website, rondacrimes.simplero.com, and going to the Contact Me page that now houses the email and Calendly online diary options. If you know or feel you're hitting your I have had enough of this set point, then let's set up a free curiosity call to have a chat and see how I can support you and make sure we are a good fit for each other without any obligations. 
Much love. Until next time.